Hello and welcome, beautiful people, to Mars Day with Mark number 38. It is your host with the most, Mr. Mark David Meyer with the fire, here to share ideas and take the collective vibration higher. And we're doing the video a little bit differently. I'm filming it on the phone, vertical. And this will give you the opportunity to see things exactly the way that I'm seeing them. So I hope you enjoy this style of content. If this works well, if you like it, please drop a like. Let me know. Feedback and interaction is greatly appreciated. I love and appreciate you guys from the bottom of my heart. Let's see where to start. We are nine days into the season of Pisces. And that's what you're going to see right here with the first one at nine, the circle. That's the sun, the center of our solar system. And this gives us life and energy and awareness for the whole world. And above all that, the sun really integrates our self-image and persona into life. It is energy, just like everything else. But the whole point is that life is a little more mystical at the end of the year when we turn into Pisces time. So the focus will be the universe, the all that is, the all that ever will be, the ineffable essence that we come from and will return at some point. So things are getting kind of... I mean, things have always been deep. I don't know how you're experiencing life. Let me know how you are. Like, I'm great. Thanks for asking. But uh, Pisces, in my opinion, just like a lot of things, is just what you make of it. This sign is one of the most fascinating and mysterious. And on a deep level, the archetypes can talk about our belief systems and our assumptions for life and even the influences that affect us either consciously or unconsciously or both. So... When I say deep, I really am not using vague filler words just to take time and give you empty calories. I really want you to consider that astrology is a language. And on some level, we use all these symbols and archetypes to try to explain existence. And when we land at Pisces, the very end, we've gotten an influence from the whole journey. And we all are influenced by the world. And I think you see the ideas on some level or get to the point of what I'm trying to push for. But, you know, everything that we experience is in some way influenced by our subjective experience. Perception is reality. Life quite literally is what you make of it. So before I go any further to the other planets, the message I get from the sun in Pisces is to be aware of your self image. In other words, who the hell do you think you are? Because <laughs> genuinely, the way you answer that question is very important and your life is in a roundabout way manifesting according to that script whether you can see it realize it or not i'm telling you it's going according to that plan so i just encourage you with love and warmth to see yourself in a positive way whatever that means it's very likely you're far better than you think you are it's likely you're far more talented more smart more capable, more kind than you really think you are. So I just encourage you to make your assumptions about yourself positive. Give yourself the grace that you would give other people as well, okay? This week, we do have a pretty interesting sun aspect. So I want to remind you guys, if you are new here or if you just um, are coming back, this is the astrology breakdown for the whole week. So we're starting today on Tuesday at the 27th, and then we're going to end at the 5th of March. All right, and there's going to be some movement along the way. I'm going to tell you about the major highlights, okay? The most important thing you need to know about the sun as we start this week is the sun is making a conjunction to Saturn at 9 degrees of Pisces. So Tuesday, Wednesday, this is going to be a very pronounced conjunction. And we are going to feel this in our energy. And you've probably been feeling this already to some degree because it's been coming up. And the sun conjunct Saturn is a every year phenomenon if you really track this transit this will happen once a year and we'll have you know major squares and opposition along the way so when we have the sun joining saturn this gives us a conscious look at our paradigms the structure of the world the structure of our body just like any placement in astrology this can present a wide spectrum of possibilities but what i feel called to speak on 
and let the message come through is that this talks about our ability to uplift the spirit of depression. Saturn is cold, dry, and unrelenting, and these two planets kind of play out as opposites. Maybe not exactly, but there are quite big distinctions between the two. As you can see and feel, the sun lights up the planet, and in the wintertime, it gets very cold because of the tilt, so we need the sun. Another thing about Pisces in wintertime is, you know, you might need vitamin D. You might need to get as much sunlight as you can or take the supplements if you need to or invest in certain lights that really give you that warmth. Do things that are going to make you happy is genuinely what this conversation is about. To take the actions that make you happy because, yeah, the way that you see the world influences you. But at the same time, you have to just be. Be, do, and then You'll start to think as that person. Action's so important. Anybody can get depressed. And what I've really found in my experience is that depression is basically when your paradigms become so restricted or so limited or so inflexible that you can no longer bear to live in those conditions. And just like the spirit of you, the spirit of the sun is eternal and conscious and expanding. So no matter what your paradigms are, they are going to need revision at some point. So that's just important to remember as we go through our journey is that life is constantly changing. So we have to be a part of the change. So when it comes to the sun conjunct Saturn today and this week, you know, pressure will probably ease off of a lot of us after this conjunction. So we could look at a pretty easy week, but at the same time, we're not wishing for life to be easy. We're just committing ourselves to getting better. Okay. The sun conjunct Saturn talks about responsibility and really questioning in what ways do you create your own restrictions? In what way do you create your own bullshit? Really, it's often the ego and the fear can contradict each other. And this is a universal experience, but I'm just calling this to everybody's attention now. And if you have prominent Sun-Saturn aspects, you're going to know a lot about this personally. But self-imposed limitations are real. And you have to take accountability in order to make change within your life. Pisces is very deep and sensitive. It's a water sign. It's mystical, intuitive, and universal. So one thing that can often happen with Pisces, and mind you, this is opposite Virgo. This sign talks about escape, blame, victimization <clears throat> so where is your power where's your responsibility with great power comes great responsibility and you probably heard that before but this is just really what this is talking about is that if you are called for more power it's important that you take full control of your life and realize you create your life nobody else does the moment you point a finger at somebody else you really got more fingers pointed back at you but the point is you won't even notice that life is confirmation cat life trying to tell you to take accountability but it's everybody else's fault so there's no one to blame but ourselves, friend and at some point blame is kind of useless so we could just focus on the creative changes and solutions we want life is really responding to our energy the universe the spirit of the universe is really responding to our energy so being conscious is very important and just as a guideline as a rule of thumb if you want this message to be simplified, basically, just do not do things that diminish your consciousness. Do things that make you more present. Because running from your paradigms doesn't make them get any stronger or it doesn't help you gain power and so uh, sovereignty. So the question I have for all of us is just, do our beliefs support our happiness and well-being? Because we all are going to live and we owe it to ourselves and each other to live our most fruitful life so we can influence the universe positively so you would do well to question your beliefs i heard a quote and i might not get it verbatim but some i heard something to the effect of we question basically everything except the beliefs that we really should be questioning and I think the essence of it is pretty strong. So it's important to ask a lot of questions because there are higher forces in the world and then they do influence us. So 
to uplift the spirit of the world, to uplift the spirit of depression, we have to have faith. We have to have optimism. We have to have a hope for a better tomorrow. And that's really the baseline Pisces message before we move on to other planets. <clears throat> I like how Saturn is right here on the sun because it really gives us a big framework for the rest of the planets. And it does make this breakdown a lot easier, quite literally. But Virgo is opposite Pisces. So Pisces Virgo says hopes and dreams is the focus and that falls on schedule and routine and health and routine, I should say. What are we doing with our time? Are we being well? So take some pressure off of yourself. Don't be so hard on yourself. Manage your time so you can be more free. And the sun is how we carry ourselves. So one last thing I want to say before we move on is that you got to live your best life and do the things that are going to make you happy and keep your energy high. So when it comes to your son, Saturn, your posture is really important. How you stand, how you carry your energy, how you breathe, how you posture. It's so important. If you carry yourself powerfully, you're going to have a lot of power and put positive energy. But if you slouch and are sluggish and you don't take full advantage of your space you might feel restricted in your body and that's not fun okay so at the end of the week the sun is going to be making an opposition with lilith so what i want to say about the sun and saturn is that this does talk about looking at the negatives basically or having fear influence us on some level. And we can make a lot of good changes with this energy. We can alchemize this for straight power. We have to make our assumptions positive once again. But at the end of the day, there are messages that can come from the negative reactions or experiences that we may have. So the power does lie in our judgment. And I just would say that it's worth considering suspending judgment so we can observe and learn and then make our judgment. So one other thing I want to draw your attention to is that we have Jupiter at about 11 degrees of Taurus. So during this week, we are going to have the sun making a sextile to Jupiter. So the real gift here that we're going to have is the higher perspective. If we can focus on the big picture, life is going to be a breeze. And no matter what is coming our way, we're going to be able to see it as a gift and be able to integrate it as growth and a positive experience. Okay. So just stay open to receive gifts and blessings. And it's going to be the best week of your life. And you're going to be able to make the most out of these sun aspects and really build a strong person every single day. So I just encourage you to really give yourself the gift that you want others to receive. Show up for yourself every single day with those routines and those schedules. And it's not a prison. So don't enslave yourself to mindless patterns that don't make any sense. Allow yourself to be flexible, fluid, and go with the flow. This is a mutable sign, man. So at the end of the day, everything will whisk away. So you can't be so fucking attached to all the things in front of you. It's like if your plans don't go the way that you set them up, if you freak out, you're kind of missing the point. You know, you need to be able to be fluid and manifest and allow the universe to also take you on higher paths and lessons. And that's on some degree what the Virgo Pisces axis talks about is letting go of fucking control so you can be blessed beyond what you're pushing for. Think about it. So the moon is mooning, dude, and it's my lunar birthday today. Shout out to the Libra moons, man. I hope you guys are feeling yourself. I hope you're feeling at peace and feeling powerful and the love. Whew. 12th house moon right here, man. Goodness. So this moon is waning. We just had the full moon in Virgo. Moon opposite the Pisces sun, right? Hope you guys enjoyed that, man. It hit my first house. I feel new. So fucking good. But uh, the point is that this week, you know, the moon is going to start in Libra and then it'll end next Tuesday on Capricorn. So we're getting closer to the new moon. But this week, we basically have the waning moon, and we're going to have a last quarter around Sunday, Monday, when this moon goes into Sagittarius, we'll see the sun square the moon. Yep, so that's kind of what we got going on. And what does that mean? That means the tide this week, this rhythm is really about release. We just broke out the full moon. So we hit the peak of the lunar cycle, and it's all about letting go. 
moving towards our dreams, moving towards our desires, but letting go of the tension, the frustration, or the needless chinks in the chain and the kinks in the plan and smoothing things out is what this means. Allowing yourself to really go with higher flows, okay? When we hit this last quarter, this is a really good time to do some spell work, my friends, when it comes to blockbusting, releasing, uncrossing, letting go, cord cutting. The moon is letting the fuck go, dude. So it's time for you to let your leaves go and just have a good time and get ready for manifesting and putting a new seed in when we get this new moon on the 9th, okay? So get excited. Another thing I want to show you about the Pisces constellation, we got Mercury and Pisces all week, man. It's a Mercury Pisces week. So we are going to have interesting aspects. I don't really want to talk about them, to be quite honest, gang, because Mercury does move so fast that uh, you would do well to know your own natal Mercury and then just be able to watch the natal aspects that it makes with yours, okay? But the point stands, Mercury stays in Pisces all week. What is Mercury? Mercury is how we think, how we analyze and communicate. That's the mind. And Mercury in Pisces is thinking like a fish, if you really think about it. So <laughs> what does a fish think like? They don't think a damn thing, dude. <laughs> They're just vibing, existing. Um, let me be for real, dude. Mercury Pisces is the universal lens. So it's full circle perspectives and it's highly illuminated. And it's highly delusional and lost. So while you may be making deep integration when it comes to your mind or seeing the big picture or hitting some profound downloads, it's always worth putting application over theory. Because I don't give a damn what you know if you can't put it in the real world. You get what I'm saying? Mercury in Pisces is about emotional intelligence and intuitive knowledge because what's crazy is you got jupiter the ruling planet of pisces ruling over mercury which is traditionally challenged in jupiter signs so the point just being is that uh your mind might be more picturesque or symbolic in really what i feel collectively and i've seen this personally in my life but you might be having more dreams you might be seeing signs from the universe or your conversation with the void is getting more clear because I want to be clear and remind you that the universe is one spirit and it's comprised of many other spirits, but you can have a conversation in relationship with the universe. And if you talk to the universe, it will talk back if you actually listen. So I would encourage you to try it, like try it out, man. You probably already have in this conversation on some level, but more power to that relationship, more peace to that relationship. May it be more beautiful and reciprocal for you every day you live. And you can say, yes, I accept that <laughs> into your life, that blessing. So Mercury in Pisces says, damn, that's far out. Some of y'all need to write a book. Some of you guys need to really share your perspective with the world because it's like you've been on the hermit, the Virgo side. But if you don't bring the information back, what's the point of the journey? Some of y'all need to really write that book or get your message out explain your message to the people to the void like really that's a that's a strong phrase send your message to the void i don't know what that means to you but god bless it please do that shit okay and one thing i was seeing is that mercury is going to be opposing you know i said i wasn't going to talk about the mercury aspects but you know let me let me stop then <laughs> let me stop let me bring your attention to the North Node. This is really the prime focus when it comes to this week and really for a longer time than that. But the point is full speed ahead. The North Node is our collective direction and it's getting really personal for you to embark on this new journey. I might pull a few cards. I might go hard. I don't need to, but they are sitting right here. You don't got to have all the answers, man. You just got to take action. It's great to have a plan. It's great to have clarity can't put a price on that but at the end of the day man sometimes you just got to take action sometimes you just got to trust in yourself and there's chiron conjunct the node so i want to say collectively there is healing because this is a collective astrology report the healing revolves around self-image self-awareness so yeah of course we need an accountability check like saturn suggested but the point is you have to see yourself positively 
Whatever that means to you, I challenge you to see yourself more positively and on a more practical. I mean, that's very practical and useful. But on another practical note, I encourage you guys listening and especially my Reiki healers. But even if you're not a Reiki healer, I encourage you to spend some time in meditation with your hands on your face. No joke. And the point being is that there's chakras on the palms. So if you rub your hands together, get the energy to flow to the chakra palms, the palm chakras, I could say, put the palms on your face, you're going to send energy to your face. And this is our self image, our identity, our first house, our temple. So we owe it to ourselves to send love to ourselves, and this will bring healing. So that's my message for Chiron and Aries conjunct the North Node is send some love to your beautiful face this week. And look yourself in the eyes in the mirror and tell yourself, name, I love you so much. And I love your beautiful face. I love your beautiful face. I really want you to say it to yourself because it means so much more coming from you. Okay. And uh, one thing you need to know about Aries, this is ruled by Mars. So this is going to guide us towards our destiny. Oh, wow. <laughs> Mars is square Jupiter. So a lot of people cannot contain their excitement right now. Me personally, I relate. So I've been getting in the gym and I've been increasing my output when it comes to the strength building. And that's been giving me plenty of satisfaction to go hard. So what I really feel about Mars and Aquarius, conjunct Venus, there's a lot going on in those two things I just said, the sign and the conjunction is that uh, really... The point here, guys, Mars and Aquarius is all about raising your vibration, not to be woo woo or weird, but nah, to be as weird and woo woo as possible. Raise your fucking vibration, raise your energy higher than you've ever raised it before, but make sure that shit is grounded on the planet because the building can really be only as tall as the foundation. So, or as stable as the foundation is. So posture, breath work, smiling. What are you doing to move your energy around? Are you doing breath work? Are you meditating? Are you exercising? Are you eating good food? Because that's what's required. Whatever that means to you, that's required. Live a good life, man. Aquarius is the archetype of freedom. We got Pluto out here too, man. And it's going to be a long road with Pluto and Aquarius. A long, beautiful road. Really, it's going to be exactly what you make it. What you manufacture it to be and nothing but. Well, we make it. Aquarius is about freedom. It's about engineering. It's about using the mind. And when I think about Mars and Aquarius, this feels like as much as you can, because sometimes impulse is required, like we talked about. As much as you can, try to take a systematic and scientific approach towards manifesting and engineering what you're building, okay? And that's always going to serve you right. Make a plan, take the action. In other words, I could say, guys, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. And that's not good. So I really want everybody listening to me to think 10 times harder than you work, man. That's what working smarter means is slow the fuck down enough. Let your urgency help you think better, not just spin your wheels. Because when you slow down and focus, you can take the leverage of the whole universe, past, present and future. But this assumption, like I got to do things as fast as possible, not waste time. That's kind of counterintuitive sometimes if you're doing it from the feeling or belief of lack. So assumptions, again, are very powerful because I want to say that Aquarius is ruled by two planets. Saturn, the ancient ruler, and we've talked about that quite a bit. So the point is, remember, you create your paradigm. Don't get so lost in the world and your problems that you forget that you create your paradigm. Not only is there an easier way to do what you're doing, there's an easier way to live in general, fam. And you need to be open to see that. Yeah, for real. And then the modern ruler of Aquarius is Uranus at 19 degrees Taurus. And Uranus is all about raising the vibration. It's all about necessary change. Whether we want it or not, it's coming. Uranus is in Taurus. It's elevating the earth. And really, on a more symbolic level, this just says live your best life, live the good life. And really, that's going to require your core values as guidance so you can be true to yourself. And you have to allow yourself to think for yourself, man, or else the mind is effectively useless. So 
Just remember, freedom comes through the mind, not from the mind. I'm going to say that one again, guys. Freedom comes through the mind, not from the mind. There's a big difference in the way you pursue life, okay? You're playing to win or you're playing not to lose. And think about it. Whew. <laughs> so Mars and Venus together in the sky. Let's talk about this now because this really is going to tie that Jupiter energy and the Uranus energy back to Mars because Venus rules Taurus. So the point being that uh, Venus and Mars together is highly satisfying, is highly exciting. It's pleasurable. It's fun. It's romantic. This is the union of the masculine and the feminine energies. And that might look like pure romance. If you are partnered romantically, I feel like it's likely that you've never felt this in love before. That every day you're falling deeper in love with your partner. That's what I'm seeing. If I could just love what you listening. Oh my God. Oh my goddess. If I'm being honest. I'm in love with the most beautiful woman in the world. And it's not just her body. It's her spirit. It's her mind. It's the mental connection we have. The spiritual connection we have. <sighs> My heart. <laughs> Be still. Oh. But beyond romance. Because Venus talks about our needs in our relationships. Our relationship to ourself. Everybody else in the world. Our higher ideals. That's all Venusian. But when it comes to... The other aspects of Venus needs food, money, shelter, comfort, entertainment, creativity, meaning, questions, answers. You know, you got a lot of needs. You could list them out. And just remember, life is multifaceted and deep. So you got to have a fruitful life, whatever the fuck that means. Live your best life. Live your fullest life. And remember, when it comes to Saturn ruling Aquarius... Your energy affects the whole world. Whether you want to see that or not, it does. So by living a better life, you influence the world in a more positive way. So if you won't invest in yourself because you feel like you don't deserve it or you feel like you can't afford to, I would encourage you to think beyond yourself and not be so selfish and ask, can you afford not to invest in yourself? If your energy really affects the whole world, do you want the karmic repercussions of harming the world by not investing in yourself? Confirmation cat. You don't want that shit, fam. No. You can't afford not to do the things that help you grow. Straight up, man. And if you're not growing, you're shrinking. Okay? I hope that, it, I hope that lights a fire under your ass that makes your heart really warm, too. And I want to say this message is from Vesta. She's somewhere around here. Hi, baby. Message from Vesta. I think I turned her off in the chart. Hold up. I'm going to show you guys something crazy. We're going to do it live. Yeah, let's put Vesta back in the sky. Vesta in Gemini, square Neptune in Pisces has a message for you. And I'm going to leave you off on this, my friends. The person tending the fire is always the warmest. I love you from the depths of my soul and the top of my spirit. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like and a comment. Share your ideas. Your voice matters. I'll see you guys on the flippity flip. Oh, and by the way. This video was sponsored by me. So if you would like to hear from our sponsor for a second, MrMarkDavidMeyer.com. Simplified Astrology, the easiest place on the internet to learn your astrology. Visit my profile, MarkDavidMeyer.com, and invest in the guide on how to learn your chart and read the skies. And if you lucky ducks are hearing this message before the moon goes into Scorpio, you can actually grab Simplified Astrology half off with no code required. And actually, all my courses are half off. So take advantage of yourself, of the offer. Take advantage of yourself. Take the initiative to invest in yourself is also what I mean. There's my due diligence. I'm always willing to promote myself and my value. Blessed be. I love you.